In July 1123, far away from the Furness Peninsula, an event took place that was to have a major impact for centuries. Stephen, Count of Boulogne, later King Stephen, granted land to the Benedictine Savignac's order to establish a monastery, first at Tulkett near Preston, but three years later they moved to Furness. That monastery eventually became the second wealthiest Cistercian Abbey in the country, Furness Abbey. The prime reasons for the move were the isolation, a good supply of running water, and wood to be used in the building work, plus the local red sandstone itself. Well, primarily the abbey was built as a religious uh, building and the monks spent a lot of their time in prayer. But the motto, if you can say that, is labore et orare, to work is to pray. Now, there were two kinds of monks. The Cistercian, well, the Cistercians had two kinds of monks. The monarchy, which were the literate people, and they became the teachers, the doctors, the cellarer, the scribe, who was John Stell, and then there were the, this vast army of lay brothers, and they were the ones who did more manual work. And they did all the baking and brewing, and they worked in the fields. They worked on the granges, which is very important, because those granges then became villages, which grew into, in the case of Barrow, it grew into the town of Barrow. Well, the most important building in the whole abbey, of course, was the church and they met there, the monks met there seven times a day. Chapter House was where they met every day and the, um, the abbot would read a chapter from the rule of St. Benedict. Um, faults would be confessed and then business matters would be dealt with. Well, the infirmary was like a miniature monastery. It had its own kitchen, its hospital, and it was the first hospice and hospital in Furness. I always think of it as, a, as the abbey as the forerunner of the welfare state because um, it had all the things necessary for a monk to live his life. The cloister was the hub of the monastery. Everything happened there. The culture books were, were written by John Stell, the scribe of the abbey. He was instructed in 1412 um, to write them. Now they contain all the deeds, charters of the Abbey and they're in two volumes. One volume is in the public record office and the other volume is in the British Library. I've seen both of them. The Abbey owned an enormous amount of land. This was given to them by grants because the Normans, remember, were a very religious people and they thought that by giving land to the monks they would ensure for themselves um, a place in heaven. The Abbey also built ships and exported wool to Europe. They were the first to mine ore and to produce iron, laying the foundation for Barrow-in-Furness, but more of that later.